Hey everybody and welcome back to Crypt Monkey Paints. This is our um, big project day. So today we are working on Cthulhu from Spare Um Studios, which I love their name. It's so much fun. Uh, this is a Kickstarter I backed forever ago. I can't even remember when, but uh, I absolutely love all of his models. Rawr. Um, and I am trying to get this one finished up for Archon, which will be at the first weekend of October. So last weekend, we got the base pretty much done. Yay. Uh, I need to work on the runes still. They need to have their nice, pretty blue glow effect going. And other than that, I am sanding on his wings right now. I've kind of started one wing. I know I said I wouldn't do anything without you guys, but I just literally started while Ty was getting the last few little setups done. So let's jump in and get started going and you guys can watch me sand some more. Yay! <laughs> uh, this is still just the gap filler. And if you remember, we used the green stuff on, hopefully pick my arms up here, maybe I won't shake the camera so much. Uh, I'm less concerned about how the gap filler looks and that's why you keep seeing me rub my finger over. As long as it's smooth, once it's painted, it'll, it'll look good. So I don't care how it looks, I just care how it feels to the touch. And it's, this is pretty gritty sandpaper. Um, it's just what I happen to have on hand. We usually have a couple of different grits and I wanted something that would kind of dig in so I used a heavier grit. I think that's how you say it. The The rougher it is is the heavier duty or grit, correct? Uh, the, the rougher it is, the lower the grit. The lower the grit, sorry, okay. I'm not very good with technical terms. When I want sandpaper, I go and I, I touch it and make sure, and like I, I know what I need it to do. So I don't know the numbers I need, I just know the texture I need. Um, but if you remember, we used the, the regular gap, my regular gap filler, which is the Vallejo gap filler for this, which is the plastic putty. Um, comes in a little tube. Actually, I should put it down here. Uh, this is the one I typically use, but for the base, we used green stuff just so that we would have a comparison. And, you know, you can see, like, this is the line, so it goes all the way across there. And I think this is probably the the best one I've done so far as far as gap filling. Random hair on it, sorry. Uh, you can see all the gaps, but I'm actually losing them on the top, which is not normal for me. So. <laughs> Hi, Damaged Microbe. I believe that's Jake if I'm not remembering, or if I'm remembering great. Yeah, and I'm not really a fan of the texture or the sound of this. Uh, oh shit if you remember from last week that's also the piece we broke off and glued back on I just broke it right back off that's fine I'll fix it later I'm not gonna be painting on the wing for a few anyway so it's not a big deal but I don't want to see any of this stuff yes no noises while I'm sanding it's not nice man not nice so I definitely like how the green stuff worked on the base, but I'm not a fan of how sticky it is when I'm working with it. And that might just be because I cut it slightly off and didn't get my a good even shot of it. So... LA hot boy. <laughs> LA hot boy or la hot boy? Is it LA hot boy or la hot boy? <laughs> I'm also wondering if that is, uh, if you're literally saying hello to your sister or not, <laughs> or it's just a saying. Well, yeah, I'm wondering if it's Keith. Because I actually have a brother in Louisiana. Actually, I have two brothers in Louisiana. I think Trey's still in Louisiana. He might. Last I heard, he was in Crowley. That's still Louisiana. 
Well, yeah, I know what I'm saying, but he might have gone over to Oklahoma because that's where Heidi is. No, he Heidi's in Texas now. I. Hi, <laughs> Trey Trey. How are. Sorry. Hi, Trey. Not say Trey Trey. It's so hard not to say that, my baby. So, everybody, that is my little brother. He's my baby brother. He's the baby one. I wasn't sure. Last I heard you were still in, like, the Crowley area, but I wasn't positive. <laughs> Isn't this the most wonderful sound ever, Trey? Because I'm not going to call you L.A. Hot Boy. I'm just telling you right now. At least I know it's Louisiana Hot Boy, but that's no... That's my baby brother. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So I have a wet paper towel here ready to kind of get all this sanding off. But before I paint any of the wings, I definitely want to wipe away. And that's one of the reasons I won't be straight away going into paint is because I don't want any of that dust in there. And realistically, if I was painting this myself, Tyler Lee Rucker, behave yourself. <laughs> um, realistically, if I was painting this not on stream, what I would actually do is take this outside and blow it off uh, with canned air, which we have a little pneumatic gun that's canned air that we just recharge, which is a lot nicer than having to buy those bottles. So... How are you doing, Trey Trey? Ooh, get all that gook out of there. All right, I'm gonna have to glue that back in a little while. No matter stopping point. All right, and same thing with him. I'm just feeling around for any rough spots that'll show up af after I paint. And Sir is already jumping around. Must have weather coming in because he's getting all jumpy. And these are just little uh, little files that I have for mini working as well. And since we switched over to the other or the the newer version of the software, we had an issue with the last couple of streams haven't recorded. So that's why in the loop video you see the um, the base work instead of. Actually, that's all we have done so far, baby. Oh, no, you don't have me paint. It should be me painting the base in, the sh in there, but that, re that stream didn't record for some reason. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got the notifications. What are you cooking for me? Ty needs to be, needs, needs to grill out before the weather turns too bad on us although i do love heat doesn't i love barbecue in the middle of winter because to me it's the perfect time to grill because it's not hot out don't sweat your cold <laughs> well you got a fire to keep you warm yeah usually when i paint these big guys they take me Anywhere from, you know, eight hours of painting to, to 48 to 20, you know, it, it's a lot um, between the cleanup and the painting and then like the base coating alone can take hours. And then it's all detail work, which is the fun work. Oh, that does sound good. I loved smoked chicken. That's one of my favorites. My favorite thing is pork fingers. We soak them in uh, beer overnight. Uh, a nice stout Guinness. And my mouth is watering now. Yeah, that's those. That's my favorite thing to 
to grill. Really like corn on the grill as well. Up here, I think they call them um, country ribs. That's what I was just <laughs> so anybody who's not from the South, it's a country rib. But I've, I grew up calling them pork fingers. I don't know why, that's just what they are. So what I try to do when I'm filling these gaps is get them as smooth as I can so that there's as little sanding as possible, but sometimes it's just glob it on to fill the gap and get it in there. <laughs> no, 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 I printed it. I've, this is a uh, 3D printed on my resin printer. And then I just put the pieces together. I didn't even design it. Um, that would take, well, I don't know how to design 3D models yet. I don't know if I will learn or not, but I don't know how to do that yet. But if I was modeling this out of clay, well, I would never finish it. Let's just say that. Uh, I really enjoy working with clay. I'm not that proficient at it, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. <laughs> nope, Trey, all I do is print them and paint them or sell the prints. But mainly I, uh, on the stream here, pretty much I paint. And Cora messes with me and Ty messes with me and people like to make loud noises and all that other good stuff. Which they were having quite a blast with. I think that was last episode. Yeah. All right, I think Cthulhu is smooth enough to start getting his bases, or his base colors on. Ow! Oh my gosh. Mm. He is so spiky, he is like absolutely killing me. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry, baby, what? No, I did not. Ty is my production manager. <laughs> ah. So he is over there pushing all the buttons. Last stream, we were training Cora to be production manager so that basically as we are working and everything we all have the opportunity to be able to stream because, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm get a drink real quick. That way, like Cora can produce for me or I can produce for Ty. <laughs> or me and Cora can both produce for Ty. Yeah, else. All right, so production manager has to get some, some sounds fixed up. So that means I've got a little while before anybody's gonna mess with me. <laughs> okay, so we are going to use a, one of my larger brushes because there's a whole lot of area to cover. But if you remember, I was saying how, especially on these bigger paint jobs, I, I don't really go with my miniature paints. And I just spilled orange paint all over everything. Well, guys, I did not make it my two hours into the stream without getting paint on my hands. Yeah, but I literally just spilled orange paint on the base as well. So I'm going to spend a minute to clean that up real quick. Let me just get some of my wet paper towel here. Um, but I use acrylic paints typically to do all of my painting with larger miniatures. Just because it, it would kill my actual miniature paints and not even get half the miniature done. Okay, so to be fair, I didn't actually like just brush it onto my hand. I actually spilled some paint, so. I'm getting that cleaned up real quick. All right, 
all clean. So, <coughs> excuse me, it, Miss Leo, it really depends on the miniature that I'm painting. A lot of times I will um, prime it with, <coughs> excuse me, I, it's like, I don't know if it's the dust or what. I'll prime it with uh, just a basic white or a, a gray if I'm going to prime, prime. but that really, when I'm doing um, Reaper miniatures, I pretty much always prime and I'll actually wash it in hot soapy water as well to get any of the um, residue off that the factory might put on there. But when I'm working with 3D printed models, I don't typically um, prime. I'll just go in straight with paint the moment I'm picking a, a larger brush that I want to paint with. <clears throat> so, <coughs> excuse me. But when it comes to Reaper, I almost exclusively prime just because it's, they've got a residue usually on there. This is like, I need to mix this up a little better. Um, it's got a residue on there, so I wash that off. But then even then you can get this. And anybody who's already painted a little bit will know that you, you know, you make your brush stroke and it just kind of almost looks like water beating away from where you just put your paint down. And with, re, uh, with 3D printed models, you don't really have that. It just, it sticks straight down. So I don't typically worry about it with 3D printed. This paint is a little thicker than what I want. So I am going to mix it up with some water as soon as I find my water. Thank goodness that uh, my head is attached. Like literally, it's a bright red cup of water. I don't know how the heck I cannot see that thing right now. I try to keep a cup with water around for myself just so that I can mix paint up with clean water rather than getting my icky paint, you know, brush water on there. I don't know. I'm just going to pour more water into here instead. Don't know. I also tend to use uh, distilled water for my mixing into my paints. I don't rinse my brushes in it, but when I'm specifically mixing, and I really only do that because it's, uh, our water is really hard water. So I don't like it. This one is like a really, really, like you can see it on my paintbrush. Like I'm just, it's really, really thick. I do not want to like that because You'll lose all your details. I'm sure that there, it looks like everybody else is hearing the sounds, but I'm still working on why we can't. Okay. <laughs> Which I think the fun of it is that I can get scared by it, so. Is Cora on already? don't know that Cora is on. I'm gonna have to remind Little Miss to get on here. I'm just looking for a stick to stir my paint with. Because I just recently like kind of rearranged again. Big surprise, right? Um, so I'm, I'm still a little kerfuffled. I got a little thing over here that has a whole bunch of drawers in it. So basically at this point, I'm still just opening every single drawer because I don't know what's in what. But I also, I have a labeler, but I don't want to label it yet until I know this is how I like this. I did the same thing with my sewing supplies for my embroidery machine. I got a labeler and then I, I got all my drawers set up and 
waiting and ready. And then whenever I was like, okay, yes, this is working for me. I went ahead and labeled everything at that point. Can't really mix it in there. So I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth between the two. So with this, I'm kind of going based on the color scheme that I have for the um, the banner that I made that has a Cthulhu embroidered, and it's going to be kind of a, a lot of different greens. Um, I'll grab it onto a wing over there with a lot of different a lot of different green tones and, and things like that happening. But one of the majorities of the colors is gonna be or the majority of the one of the majorities, good lord. Okay, I'm done. Night all, I'm out. <laughs> I quit. A lot of it's gonna be this color is what I was trying to get at, but you know, hey, whatever. That's what I'm planning right now, but you never know. That might change. So basically, I'm just kind of slapping this paint where I think it's going to end up. But you know me. One coat is never enough with mine because I also really enjoy having nice thin coats that I can build that color up in certain spaces and not necessarily everywhere. Because see, like this area around his eye, that definitely won't be this color. So I want to get in these ridges so that there's not a, a blank area where there's no color. But I don't need to go over that whole thing. Let's see, we've got this weekend and then next. Is that right, babe? Before Archon? because it's October 1st through 3rd, I think. You're asking how many weekends we have? Yes. Yes, we have one more weekend, and then the following weekend is Archon. Okay, so that means between today and next Sunday, he needs to be finished. Thank you, Miss Leo. Got a weird clump right there. So, uh, they will be joining us at Archon. I'm not, we're not sure where their booth is going to be yet because Archon doesn't really set up a map of the vendors beforehand. They have like a layout that you find out where your booth is when you get there pretty much. Like you check in, find out your table, and then you go set up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Jill is, is really, really sweet. <laughs> they usually do what they can do to accommodate. Um, but there's also seniority that they really respect, which I think is, is awesome. You know, it, it kind of stings in some points because I'm like, oh, I'd really like to have a booth in that spot. And they're like, well, this person's been coming here for this long, so they get that spot if they want that spot. I'm like, damn. I want that spot, but I also want to be that person that's been coming there for 15 years, so I've got seniority. I just, I got to build my time in, you know? So I, I really do appreciate the fact that they do that. Ty's supposed to be learning a new toy to play with over there. I think he'll be playing with that in the next couple of streams. Right now, I think he's still trying to work on the I, the sound. Unfortunately, I think it, the, I would have to restart OBS, which means we'd have to restart. So, oh. Uh, I'm afraid everybody else is going to get to enjoy sounds if they play them, but you are not going to hear them. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I, I don't know how much of that you guys could hear from Ty, but basically what it boils down to is we would have to restart the stream in order for us to hear them. Uh, but if you play noises, you guys should be able to hear them. It's just I can't hear them, which is, I think, most of the fun is you guys being able to jump scare me. Which Jake got a lot of really great um, clips of them scaring the crap out of me last when last time. So. It would really be a lot better for me to go in and, you know, use my airbrush to, to base coat things like this. But I can't use my airbrush on stream, so. And I did promise I wouldn't touch this. So I am sticking to my promise. Um, I mean, I guess technically I could use the airbrush. I would just have to mute myself. And it's, well, it's just not that much fun to watch either. So I don't know why I would. Ty, do you want to remind Cora that she's supposed to be, or they're supposed to be, uh... What's, I forgot the word. They, they work on the stream. They, they monitor it. They... Moderate. Moderate, thank you. I knew I was on the right track, but I was on the wrong word. And so I've got uh, a couple of paint jobs that I need to get done before this, uh, before our, con well, one that I need to finish this weekend, uh, which is almost done. Uh, it's a few little tiny details. I was actually working on it before I, the stream started. <coughs> and it's uh, the Quetzalcoatl. Quetzal? Quetzalcoatl. I don't know why I always do that. Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl. Um, yeah, he's turning out really, really awesome. I love how the back of his wings turned out. I was going to tell you, too. Remember, you were worried about him, uh, the weather or whatever it must be. It's all black west of us, even though it's all sunshine above us right now. Yeah, I figured. Um, but I had a customer on Etsy send me a reference photo and wanted me to base it on the colors that he had seen on, an, on someone else's paint job on the same model. So I was working on that. I need to finish that this weekend. Now, as soon as I'm done with the stream today, I'll literally set Cthulhu back down and I'll pick up the, the Quetzalcoatl. No? That was pretty good. Okay. I'll pick him right back up and start working on him again. And then I have another customer who has uh, purchased three different spell effects and I'm painting all of them. One of them is a fire spell that he wants painted basically like the Eye of Sauron, which is gonna be a lot of freaking fun. And then the that's the fire spell effect, the water spell effect he wants it, uh, the necro hand spell, I, choking spell, I think. Yes, I said quadacoatl. Thank you, Cora. Quexacoatl. Um, he wants that one painted because it, he's not going to use it as a water effect. He's going to use it for his necros. Um, choking grasp, I think, is the name of the spell, but I'm not positive because I've never really played a necro. Um, so that one's going to be like blacks and greens and everything else like that. And that's going to be a lot of fun. And then the other one is a lightning spell. And he hasn't given me the theme on that one yet, but I'm going to guess it's going to be lightning. 
Uh, I don't think so, Cora. It, it it was like choking something, choking noxious gas or choking gas or choking grasp. I don't know. I don't remember exactly, and I, it's not like I can look it up. Um, and then uh, my solar celestial, the one that's standing on the sun is like uh, somebody else purchased that and wants it painted in a very fae-like aspect um, and sent me a reference photo for the colors. And I mean, it's like gonna be blues and greens and just, you know, the really, really bright woods. You know, what you'd expect for a, a fae woods, wooding, woodland scene, you know? So that one is going to be a lot of fun because I have never painted her in that bright of a color scheme. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. And Ty, did you get photos ready? Of what? I'm multitasking here. What are you talking I'm about? Sorry. <laughs> um, for for Lord of the Print examples. No, but I will. So we also have very exciting news. We joined another um, merchant tier. So we now have the ability to sell Lord of the Print models. And I'm so excited. Um, we've got a few of them listed on our Shopify page, but I think Ty is going to throw up some example photos that we have. We were running behind schedule today. Yeah, Ty thought we were starting a half an hour later than we were what we were doing, and I was working on the Quetzalcoatl, so I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention to anything other than, ooh, look, here's red, ooh, look, here's blue which I will grab it here in a minute and show you guys. But I need to get to a stopping point with him. I say a stopping point, well, what I actually mean is a, I'm forced to stop because I'm waiting for paint to dry. And yes, I'm purposely just random rambling on because I'm base coating and it's not terribly interesting. But I love you guys for being here with me. I'm getting a little angry at Cthulhu right now for how stabby he is being, but it's okay. Like I said, there's there's not a whole lot that I'm terribly concerned about. Certain spots I'm missing, and I'm not really concerned because it's not really going to be this color anyway. I just want to make sure I get the bulk of the model done um, with this kind of base layer coat. dragging him around on his face at the moment. It's not very nice of me. I keep doing that. I keep brushing right there. That's not going to be this color. I don't know why I'm bothering. I think part of it is because I'm not exactly sure what color it's going to be anyway. Awesome sauce. stand up it's funny because like the main thing I do when I'm painting Cthulhu is hold his hand <laughs> going hand in hand through the destruction of the world Woohoo! I'm planning on rewatching the series that's on HBO, um, Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country. It was really good and I really want to watch it again. I'm hoping they're going to make more. I haven't heard anything about it, although I don't really look for that kind of stuff anyway. Ty or Nick usually tell me when stuff is happening. Yeah, it definitely is, uh, 
painful to watch. That's for damn sure. So, I'm sorry, no tie. What? I'm showing them. Oh. Yeah, there you go. So those are some of the new prints that we have from Lord of the Print. Lord of the Print. Uh, he is a, an amazing sculptor. He is extremely popular and for very clear reasons. <laughs> so I am gonna leave. Grab his wing, little wing gappies. Um, I'm gonna kind of leave his feet alone because I don't think this color is going to be his his feet is not going to be this color anyway but we pretty much have a base coat on him <coughs> yes I'm I'm mm, I'm not gonna say yes I'm gonna say I hope so um, I have a couple of really large miniature orders on Etsy right now that I need to get printed off uh, printed and shipped and then once all of those are done I'll be able to to start printing more things that are going to come to Archon but uh, the one that is the guardian with the wings wrapping down and <clears throat> like kind of him standing on I definitely want to have one of those printed because I desperately want to paint that it's going to be so much fun <laughs> I would love to have the Tarasque, but there's also a um, one that uh, looks like, oh, the World Eater. What's his name? You know his name, Miss Leo. What is it? Oh, it is the Tarasque, isn't it? Anyway, but there's one that looks more like Godzilla than like this. And he looks so amazing. And I would love, love, love to have that up. And I have paint everywhere. Okay, so I had mixed up a bunch of colors for my um, the Rubber Ducky of Doom. And some of these colors, like specifically this weird red color, is like really kind of perfect for some of the areas on him as a base coat. So I'm going to use that. Especially in his um, tentacles and things like that, like the underside of his tentacles having that as a base coat <clears throat> for those are, is going to be a lot of good or work really well i can't seem to find any of the brushes that i want that'll work um but yeah as as far as what i can take to archon <clears throat> it'll be everything and anything i can possibly get printed in time um I've got about four more, four more days of straight printing. Yeah, uh, for the current orders that I have. Because uh, like I said, one orders, he ordered quite a few large prints. Like one of the pieces that he ordered is the uh, Mind Flayer Dragon. And he's three prints. And to put that in perspective, Cthulhu, uh, this Cthulhu on my current printers is four prints. So I'll tell you, the Mind Flayer Dragon is not much smaller. Um, here, back up a little bit, Cthulhu. Thank you, my love. And then there is the... Uh, See, the Mind Flayer Dragon and the Heavenly, I can't pronounce that other word. Yeah, I know, I love, uh, one of the guys is like, I'm sorry to bother you again. I'm like, dude, I can talk minis every day, all day. Trust me. It's Heavenly something. Basically, it's a big giant snake serpent um, standing on a broken building. And his wings are ginormous. And he's another, he'll take three prints just to get him printed. And each one of those three prints is a 12 hour print. So. Definitely happy to have the business and happy to have the miniature business 
but masks are also keeping me fairly busy. Um, and I had one lady message me and she's like, oh, we're taking an unexpected trip. Do you think you could have masks to me here by Friday? I'm like, well, where is here? <laughs> and when are you going to place your order? <laughs> I need a couple more details. But yeah, she was super sweet. And it was, I was like, yeah, if, you know, if you order today and, you know, you're in the United States, yes, I can probably get it done. And she's like, cool. And then she placed her order and she wanted like 12 masks. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I guess I should have asked that question too. <laughs> I think we're about to hear a barking puppy. Because I think I just heard the the UPS truck, which means the dog's going to go nuts. Huh? Oh, the, it wasn't the truck? I'm expecting more fabric today, so. I assumed when I heard the big truck tires that that's what that was going to be. I also need to finish painting the rest of the board game pieces um, for the Nemesis game. You know, I think that's what I'm going to do because um, I don't have anything scheduled for Tuesday for painting. So I think what I'm going to actually do is go ahead and print off one of the angels from Lord of the Print um, or something from his thing I'm not sure what yet but I'm gonna think I'm gonna print one of his pieces so that I can stream one of his because I haven't done that yet but I really 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 want to paint that big feathered guy so I might print him and one of the nice things about his uh, files that he supplies is um, he'll, you know, all, all of his stuff, bleh, can't talk today. All of his stuff is pre-supported, but you get, you know, the supported files or the non-supported files, depending on, you know, what you want to do. So you have both versions, but uh, he also has a lot of his models are very large models but they're also he sets it up to where you can get you can print the full piece um like the uh tarasque one that we were showing just uh it was oh did we show the tarasque or did we show the the demon the severus thing I showed both. Oh, okay um, well, regardless, either one of those are giant models, but I can, because I have such a large printer, I can actually print them in one solid piece. Um, so he gives the option of having them in pieces or printing them as a solid piece, which I really prefer because I don't want to have to assemble if I don't need to. Especially like, um, con mates like Miss Leo. I mean, how many pieces did you watch me have to super glue together and piece together and do all that just to put it on the table. Uh, it's, it's kind of a pain and gap filling is not something that I enjoy doing. I, I prefer just to have it all in one and clean up the supports and sand any rough areas and then move on and, and get to painting. Because I'm not gonna lie, gap filling is an art on its own. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's especially like somebody sees these beautiful models and then you glue them together and you have this big giant 
gap and it's like well i don't want that one i want one with no gap I'm like well you gotta gap fill it well i don't want to do that <sighs> if i can just print it whole um ha much much happier so uh I, I do like that a lot of the ones that i've seen so far i don't even have that as an option they just assume you're going to need it in pieces so they give it to you in pieces now granted i my printer actually Huh. Without his wings on, I could probably print Cthulhu in one piece, but I don't have that as an option, and I can't put the pieces together. I'd have to print his wings whole. I mean, I knew I know I could do his wings whole, and then I wouldn't have that horrible gap in the wings. I, I can't stand that. I wish those files were together. I'm rambling, I know. But that's what you guys are here for, is to watch me put paint on things and for me to ramble. <laughs> yeah but one of my favorite things to do is to get to a convention set stuff up and then sit down and like literally just okay here's all the models out in front of me let me paint oh that one looks good i'll grab it back from the table and paint it all right so now we've got the tentacles Make sure I don't have red anywhere else. Got red on you. I beat you to it. So you can see the other places that have this texture is where I'm going for. I'll add this red to it. And I say red, but it's it's not really red. It's kind of a mauve weird. You guys can name it. It's fine. I don't care. I'm very bad with color names. So since I already have my green on there, you can see I've kind of slowed down. I'm not just slapping paint on anymore. I'm kind of being a little more careful of having paint where I want to paint. <laughs> Corey, you're a jackass. Oh, plenty of... Uh. <sighs> okay, Miss Leo, you're also a jackass. My heart hurts now. Oh, that was so sad. So what Miss Leo is referring to is I was in the middle of working on a really, really nice model. I know, I love you too. And I, I, I know what will actually happen is you'll feel guilty that you said that and brought my heartache back from me ruining that model and I'll get more caramel for it, so it's okay. But Cora is referring to last week when I couldn't say royal purple. I just mutilated that completely. I don't even know what the hell happened. But yeah, fun times, fun times. I know I said I was going to grab my Quetzalcoatl out, but then I got, you know, sidetracked by painting things. What, my baby? Said that's understandable. This is what happens. It's like I, I think about things, and I'm like, oh, I should do this. Oh, I should do this. And then my hands get busy, and I don't do anything other than what my hands are doing at the moment. Yeah, I had no shot in hell at keeping my hands clean today. That just wasn't going to happen. Mainly because the way... When I have something this large, it just always happens where I, I hold him where I've painted already and it just kind of does the thing it's doing now. Because again, it's a base coat, so I'm not terribly concerned about picking off a little bit of piece here and there. Remember, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to, to ask. I'm happy to answer anything. And that piece that I was using as a tester, 
um, for color schemes that I was going to paint the board game with, I went back over that and clear cut or clear coated it, coated it in royal penurple. Yeah, I don't even know how the hell I messed that one up last time. I mutilated it so bad because um, I plan on because the sculpt looked so good and it's actually from the same sculptor. Um, the sculpt looked so good in that color scheme, the same as the the game. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it and do all of the colors, you know, paint it up proper. So I went ahead and coated it completely in purple. So maybe if I get to a spot where I've got to wait for something to dry, I can get that piece out and kind of show the blending that, how well that blended, you know. It's not exactly the same colors though, because on the board game, I used my army paints, my metallics, and on as the tester, Hang on a second, I gotta clean. I hate my thumb. I can't pick anything up with a stupid band aid. Um, a stupid band aid makes me where I can't pick anything up at all. Anyway, on the board game, I was using my army painters. But on this piece, I think I'm gonna use my bronze, which I don't have an army painter yet. So I'm gonna use my, um, my acrylic paint that's a bronze. He's like acting like it's five o'clock, isn't he? Our dog can tell time. Our dog also needs to go on a diet. I gave her one less this morning. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have, we lost a dog and we are all kind of still in the mode of, this is how many treats get dished out during the day and now that we are down to a one dog family, he's putting on a little bit of a chunk. He did go to his groomer though, his new groomer, and she did a wonderful job. Um, he does not like to be groomed, so basically we've had three different groomers here in town ask us not to bring him back. So yeah, that's how much fun he is. So we have a new groomer and she is taking her time getting to know him. So what she did, instead of grooming all of him and getting him upset and worked up and all of that, she focused in on his face, which is his main issue because he doesn't shed. He, uh, he just mats. And he, so he gets the, the ickiness around his nose and his fur just gets more and more fur. It gets longer and longer and messier and messier. And then you can't even see his little eyeballs. And he gets what we call old, old man eyebrows where it just kind of, that's what, over his face. So, sir, you want to come say hi to everybody? So, sir, you want to come say hi? Come see her. Come here. No, we're going to say hi to everybody. Come here, buddy. <laughs> he comes up, he touches my finger with his nose, and then he backs up. Because he's trying to lead me over to the thing where the things are. Come say hi. Yes. Look, come say hi to everybody. Say hi, everybody. You can see my face now. Yes. No, uh, we don't give him. We got to get him on a diet. Cause I given I've given him one today. Say hi. Yes. So he's looking all pretty. We can see his face. But you can see, look at that big old gut. Look at that big old gut. We got to lose some weight, Daddy. Oh. But I will grab the Quetzalcoatl while I, my hands are free. Do you want to switch to the big one, babe? So again, he is not completely done. I have details yet to do um, on the base and him still, but 
that is where we're at so far. I'm trying to kind of brace him. Ooh, let me see if I can spin him. The back of the wings is what I'm really, 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 really happy with. He is not exact, he doesn't like sit level either. So it's like freaking me out, man. It's freaking me out. Once I'm completely done with him, I will glue him. Well, actually I probably won't since I'm shipping him. I'll probably ship him separately. But that is him. And that is how well he's coming along. But anyway. Okay, now that I'm completely distracted for no good reason whatsoever, back to Cthulhu. <laughs> I know, buddy. <coughs> My little ploppy boy plopped himself right back down over here. This is his favorite thing to do is plop down. You can't just lay down. He's like... Pfft. So I'm really happy with with how the, the color scheme worked on that one. Um, I always like it when people ask me for certain themes... So otherwise, I feel like I'm just painting the same thing over and over and over again. It's not like I can really... I don't feel like I can keep coming up with different ideas and things like that, so... This is one of the reasons why painting him with his arms separately is useful. Ah. Cause certain spots are a little harder to get to with his arms attached. But I also know that I'm gonna be doing, the color scheme I'm gonna be doing is gonna be blending and things like that. So it's not really gonna be blended properly if I don't have him I don't have the capability of blending him properly if he's not assembled. Oh. <laughs> Ty was distracted. But that's okay. He does a lot of work over there. Quit faking sleeping. Everyone knows you're not asleep. They rarely know you're not asleep or you're very rarely not sleeping. Very rarely sleeping. You're very rarely not sleeping. <laughs> Look, I can push buttons. Wait, I don't know what button to push. I'll do that one. Because I can scare everybody else. No, it seems perfectly fair considering how good you guys got me last week. And this is all your fault that they can't get me, so. So I can, all I'm saying is I can take great advantage of it. I say that, but that's not really fair because I said, you know, earlier Ty was working with me and Cora teaching us how to, to run everything. Um, but really what it is is he's made it to where Ta Cora and I can come over and push buttons and run a stream versus all the work that he's put into getting everything ready for us. So it's not really fair, but, you know. Since when was I fair? That's probably the best way to go about it, Lulu.
Ah. Oh, stupid thumb. At this point, I'm really just wearing the Band-Aid to keep myself from getting any paint on my thumb because it really hurts. Um, but it is definitely improving. It's, it's on the mend, that's for sure. I'll have to come back and clean that up too. Ow! Wow, his nails are super sharp. <laughs> so is everybody ready for Monday? Big old sigh from Ty. <laughs> Miss Leo, have you gotten a bunch of your, uh, all your stuff ready for Archon, or are you still, like, in crunch mode trying to get everything made? Um, uh, my whole plan was I'll, I'll get this done and this done and this done and then I'll get some more coasters made from the monster manual and I have not touched them at all holy crap that is a lot of caramel Yeah, I imagine. I honestly, the as good as your caramel is, I can't imagine you're selling anything but that. Although the sugar scrub, the face stuff that I have in there in the bathroom is really, really nice. I love it, love it, love it. And I love the smell of the jasmine dragon. That is definitely my favorite scent. That's really cute. Oh, I really like that. For a wedding, having that as like little, yeah, that's really super cute. But I mean, and I would go around and give the espresso to all the children that don't belong to me, I mean. That's how I pick gifts for children in my family. So I go around and I push the buttons in the, the store and whatever makes the most noise and doesn't have an easily accessible battery pack. That's what I buy for my nieces and my nephews. Okay, <clears throat> I'm just looking for tentacle texture. See, this is more like gills, so I probably am going to change the color that this is, but for right now, I'm going to give it a base coat of this to make it pop out more. He's very Christmassy looking at the moment. <laughs> and no, this one is not going up for auction. This one will be at my table. And I think Treebeard might come along with us again this time. I don't know. I might put a pro I might keep his price tag. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry guys. The life with the poopy. Our neighbor is working on their yard.
Hedge Trimmer of Doom. He's protecting us. So we have quite a few conventions in October. I think we have three total. But we don't have anything in November now or December. Or December. So we'll have a very busy October, but then we'll have a, a bunch of time where we can make product for next year. I've got a bunch of banners that are embroidered already, but I haven't managed to sew any of them but one. One is literally ready for the rod to go at the top, excuse me. Um, but that's it. That's all I've got ready. And then, like I said, I've kind of backlogged on Etsy orders at the moment. So... I'll be slamming a bunch of stuff out. There will be a, a very sleepless week next week. Just enough rest to have a steady hand to paint with, and that's about it. losing my grip with my stupid band-aid. Yes, I'm going to bitch about this band-aid the whole stream. It's useful and stupid all at the same time. Thinking I'm gonna go to my darker green next. Cause yes, I am just making this up on my as I go. But I really like how that banner turned out, so I'm just sticking to kind of those colors. I say the banner, but all I've done is embroider it. I haven't sewn it into a banner yet. It's just a piece of fabric with a Cthulhu on it. <laughs> Um, so I want to stick to those colors to make it have that same feel, but as far as what's actually what on the Cthulhu, I'm just making it up as I go. Kind of making sure I have everything. If I've got it on this side, I've got it on that side. been looking up really fun um, face paint ideas for October or as we know it the month of Halloween because basically what I'm doing that whole month is I'm printing off miniatures in a very large scale so that I can turn them into Halloween decoration for the house. Because why not? So, thought it might be fun to paint my face to match whatever I'm working on that year, or that, that year, that week. And I've got a couple ideas of my next large print um, project which is what we're doing today and what we'll continue to do on Sundays is whatever my large large project is because we have a little more free time to stream a little longer and things like that so I can really get big chunks of, of miniature painting done on the Sundays 
You know, I don't think I want the inside of his hands to be this color. Or the back. See right here on the back of his thighs, I think I'm going to do that a different color as well. The back of his arms. Oops, sorry. Um, were you looking at me for something, baby? Um, but anyway, I have a few different potential ideas for my next large project, but I think what we're going to work on is the Eternal Ruler, which is spectacular. That's the one I... That's the one you want. We're painting that for my table. <laughs> yes. Um... But uh, I have it, Ty, if you go to the 3D folder, you can find photos of him. Okay. But he's, he's pretty freaking cool. Okay. All right, Cthulhu can stand up over here by himself now. Stand. There we go. So I'm going to move into my darker green areas. I think what I want is his wings to be a blend between my dark green and my tan. Ow. But I haven't made my mind up yet on that, so I'm going to leave that alone for right this minute. So again, I'm just using just craft paint. It's nothing spectacular. It's nothing expensive. The, the really big key here is to spray, spray, spray. He needs to be completely coated, really good coat of a sealer. Because otherwise it will just come off. All right, I'm gonna come back to this brush, I think. Nope, I'm going to stay with that brush. So on my palette, I just put green and then a black. And pretty much what I'm going to do is just kind of slap it around because I want a darker green. But I also don't want things to be... Ty's over there giggling and distracting me. <laughs> um... I don't want things to be like super consistent with the color. I want it to, to naturally have lighter and darker spots and that sort of thing. So I'll just kind of mix as I'm going and even have some of him mixing as I go on him. Yeah, so Ty's going to throw up an eternal ruler and that's going to be the next large paint job that I do. So after Cthulhu is done, that will be what I'll be streaming on uh, Sundays. And he, again, for comparison, Cthulhu is four prints and he is uh, four prints as well, I believe. So he's, he's pretty spectacular. And he's from Mini Monster Mayhem, and it's the Twisted Castle group that he came from. And one of my favorites is the Jester in that group. Oh, it's so freaking cool. Um, Ty, if you want to throw up the Jester as well, because why not? Love, love, love that Jester. The female version. <laughs> oh, you can throw up that. That's fine. Freaking thumb. 
encore. Where is my... Oh, I used it all. So, the female one is my favorite just because her stance is really freaking cool. You would think that I was like born with paint on my hands. Why am I getting that? Basically all I'm doing is the, the main color that we painted him with. Um, I'm just mixing a little bit more of that up because I had done it with added water to it and I ran out of that. So all I want to do is where the green meets, the dark green is meeting that, I just want to be able to blend it. So just nice big makeup brush and I'm literally swirling it around to get a nice smooth blend between the colors. So that way we've got dark spots, light spots, and where it all kind of blends together. And yes, I'll have this brush in my teeth for a while now. Because I can't pick things up from the table because my stupid thumb is broken. Because my stupid thumb is broken. Oh, that's a horrible noise. And that too. Not fun. Now I'll be more careful on this side because I don't want to hit that red. Which I just did. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just the first coat. It is 4.30 already? Good lord. So what are you going to do if we can't get done on next Sunday? Like, do another episode? Um, I'll have to do an extra episode because it has to be done before Archon. Basically, I think what we'll probably do is if we're not going to finish this between Sunday and, you know, like this Sunday and next Sunday, what I'll probably do is that Tuesday um, continue working on him. I don't know what I'm saying right now because I don't have a calendar in front of me, but I think you guys get the gist of what I mean. He, he has to get done because he's going to Archon. So. I'm sorry, I probably took that a little bit too far out of frame. But you see how just blending it with this makes it makes it awesome sauce. I'm pretty sure the tail is in the way for you guys on that side, but I'm not doing anything motion wise, I'm not doing anything different. Something right there that I don't like. It's like a support or something. Yep. I 
Yeah, that's looking good. I'm just blending around and grabbing paint however you know I'm gonna say it again no rhyme no reason just this might look good here like the really deep spots I've picked up a lot of black so I can kind of come up in this area And his spikes I'll probably take to uh, a bone this time. I usually do them like a shiny black because I really like it, but I want to do something a little different. big surprise you get to watch me slap paint on things again <laughs> clean my brush a little bit get some of that dark out and I'm gonna come back to my really really light really does feel like that's what I do is slap paint on things. Just throw some paint on it and then blend it. Then throw some paint on it and blend it. And then dry brush. <laughs> Done. Now you know how to paint a miniature <laughs> from start to finish. Be a little. It doesn't really help because I've got the sound messed up so people can't really share it with you. That's a nice way of saying it, right? I have figured out how people use bits to make the sounds we design them. When they hover over the screen in Twitch, the little sound alerts guy comes out and they can click on them and then spin bits to use those these other sounds. Gotcha. little too bright right there.
Oh, it just hit my thumb. See, I'm completely changing my idea now because I'm really liking how this back piece looks. Sorry, I'm just kind of like into the painting right now. Any questions, feel free to ask. I'll... I'm completely changing my idea of what I wanted to do with it because I really like how this back looks. So I think I'm going to go darker than what I intended to do. Still going to stay in the green family, but he's going to have a lot less of that mint green that we covered him with. It. Covered him. Covered him with first. Oh, my shoulder hurts. Did you just say yay? I thought you said yay when I said that he was going to have less of the mint green. That was not a mouse click. When you said what? He's going to have less of the mint green that I started off with. <laughs> Ty, you see that? Um, when I I like fuzzy seaweed moss Cthulhu um, I'm really confused anyone else getting oh, okay I, I'm, I'm like reading Ty's comment and your comment as one thing so that's why I'm like disheveled, disheveled. yes thank you Okay, so let me stop doing that, and I'm going to read the comment again. So I'm stuck on the theme, but moss or like fuzzy seaweed, moss Cthulhu would probably be fun to do. Okay, now I'm with you. Now I'm with you. I was so lost. So originally, my plan was to stick to the colors from an embroidery that I had done, which was like kind of a minty green sort of colors and stuff like that, and I really like that thought oh okay gotcha yeah um but then i did the back and it ended up with this really dark and i'm like oh i really like that so you know it's not for a customer it's for me so i can change my mind if i want to 
So basically, yeah, I'm just going with the flow at the moment. My, my theme is still in the green range, but much darker. And yeah, it does kind of give me that seaweed vibe. Kind of re reminds me of the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. It has a very aquatic creature look to it right now. Which, which is, is kind of, it, it fits. And not only does it fit, it fits me because I love anything having to do with the water. So, keep in mind, technically, we're still working on the base coat, you know? We're building up colors so that we can do details later. hold hands again but I mean if you look at my palette I'm just tapping into this color into that color and then just slamming around wherever you know so I'm mixing on my palette and on Cthulhu itself because I've you know kind of given up on being Super like, let's make sure this gets here and this gets there. Eh, let's just slap some paint on it. It's what I'm good at. I'm not trying to do details right now anyway. There's no reason for me to, to stress over it. Not that I tend to stress over it anyway. Anytime I'm painting something for myself, I'm never stressed over it. I'm just like, let's have fun, yay! But the second I start to paint something for somebody else, I'm like, it's not good enough. This looks like crap. Look at this little spot right here that I messed up. I need to redo the whole thing. Just go like insane. I don't even know what happens. Like I was really beating myself up over the Quetzalcoatl and I sent the guy a picture or I sent him a message saying, look, you know, I, I'm not happy with this. I need to keep working on it. I need a couple more days. And he's like, yeah, I understand. No worries. And that's like, you know, this is send, you know, send him a message again later. I'm like, thank you so much for the extra time. This is where I'm at right now. I'm almost done. And he was extremely happy with it. I'm like, I don't know why I was stressed. Granted, it looked a lot better with the extra time that I took, but it still was, I didn't need to stress over that. Okay, Cthulhu, stand up. Good boy. Made such a mess of my paper towel, I gotta turn it over. Oh. Nope, he's good. The very first one that I made took a massive tumble. Broke like chunks off of him. I had to glue all kind of stuff. It was, it was so bad, I was so upset. It was the very first one I painted, very first one I had printed and just a blam. It's devastating. Ow. Funny thing is, is like, 
he's losing all of that mint gray that we or mint green that we had put up there as his base coat but it's also the color that I'm running out of the quickest on my palette and I'm almost out I need to get some more out of that one lay down this time and unfortunately it's that thick one which is kind of a pain in the tuchus uh -uh. I have made a mess it's everywhere. <clears throat> but it's okay. Nobody here is making fun of me. You guys all love me and you accept my flaws with painted hands and all. So, sir, it's not five yet. You can quit. Can only tell time when he wants to eat a tea. Or go to B-E-D. Let me say it that way instead. I don't want him taking off running for the bedroom. I wish I shouldn't have said that. Oh, he ignored me on that one. <laughs> it's because you learned how to paint from by me, Cora. With Cthulhu, it's it's less about using him as... I've got more of my palette in the shot than Cthulhu. <laughs> With him, it's more... It's less about me using him as a palette, or my hand as a paint palette, and it's more about the fact that I'm holding him. And I move my hand where I need to move my hand, regardless if there's wet paint there or not. Oh, well, that doesn't help. Itchy nose and a rubber band-aid, fuzzy band-aid on it. And this is where his wings will stick, so all I'm doing is making it kind of dark in here. And I just went over all that red work that I did. I don't know what the point of me doing detail work is until I am done with every base coat that I'm gonna do. I, yeah, I 100% I agree with, with, with that. Um, I use my fingernails. Cora has better fingernails, so they use their fingernails more than I do. But I'll do the same thing with my fingernail and using my brush, um, especially like right here, I'll use my thumb to kind of clean my brush or get it back to a point. But I'll line my fingernails with paint to get some of the paint off that I don't want and that sort of thing. I do have to switch to a smaller brush because I can't get in that area. But I like this really dark green in here. And it's still a makeup brush. So I still have those big fat bristles.
And like I said, the model that I was playing with for that color scheme is one of his models as well. This guy. Ow! Very spiky. But very fun. Clump of paint right there. Basically, anything that you put paint on can be a palette. So, fingers, paper towels, <laughs> cutting boards, whatever. Or you could actually go out and buy a proper palette and then stick it in the drawer like I did. I find that the, the best work I do is when I slap the paint on and then go over the top of all of these weird color combinations happening to make all my details pop out after. But like trying to come and get details and do all that kind of stuff right now just doesn't seem to work for me. And I think everybody has their own style and they should be, if it looks good, how, who cares how you got there, right? If you're happy, then it will be happy. So I'm going to have to come back with the the red because I'm going over it in spaces that I shouldn't be hitting and stuff like that but the rest of them is looking awesome and my palette as I try to grab more paint is just sliding all over the place <laughs> one of the worst habits I have is I get fixated in on one little spot and I try to get like that one spot done and it's amazing and the rest of the model has like no paint on it um, I do that when I'm drawing I do that when I'm painting everything so I know that that's something that I struggle with so I try to always keep moving I think that's probably why I move around so much as I'm overcompensating so one of these days I'll find that little happy balance of Okay, I don't need to move that much, but I do need to move. But I never try to paint all of one spot. You know? completely changed my color scheme. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that because I'm not really, I'm still in the green tones. It's just not nearly as minty as I was expecting it to be. He was gonna be minty fresh. Oh, well, hell, when I come back and dry brush everything, he may end up that, that minty fresh. You never can tell, right? I'm going darker in these areas just to give it, it sh the shadow it should have because it's all condensed in here, you know? Do, 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 do. 
Twitter little thing came up tie it look nice. Nice job on that. Y'all gotta give him props for that stuff, because he works really hard on there. Get all this UI and all everything to look so good and everything. Ugh. Tight corner. Some things are definitely made harder by trying to stream and paint, because it's like, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> But if I move it to where I can see what I'm doing, you guys can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I know like my head is like completely leaving this camera, but I can't see. Like that armpit in there was like a really pain in the butt. It's so messy. We are at 5 o'clock, so I understand if you guys have stuff you need to get done, but I need to get this this area blended. I need to get all these colors, this base coat done before I can be done. But I also have to be done before Walking Dead starts, so I'm going to keep on trucking. But we're getting there. I think I'm going to be able to switch back to the big brush here in a minute. More paint on the hairs. Yes, Cora is going to be making meringue. Which I'm going to eat all of and then bounce off the walls. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the mixer is quite loud, so they can't work on it while I'm working on this. Not that it would bother me, it's Mike, you know. Mike's kind of a prima donna and only likes us to make a certain amount of noise while we're working. Ow. Cthulhu, quit being a jerk. <laughs> oh, I love the little things with your face, Ty. Sir's trying to let you know it is actually five o'clock now. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh. That looks good. And see how that looks like that what I'll end up doing is coming back with a purple, a royal purple. Bro, 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 bro. Is technically how I think I said it last time. And I'll put that in that deep groove right there. And that'll really bring it to life. Or death, whichever, you know. What are we whispering? Talking about you. <gasps> how dare you! <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna truck along because we got the big brush back. Woohoo! Move your fingers. You move your fingers. <laughs> oh no. Okay, Cora is in the background making noises at me, guys. I'm not insane. Well, I mean, I am insane, but that's not really why I was doing that. At that particular moment in time, I had a good reason. 
And basically, because I've been married to Tyler for so long, I have random outbursts as well. He has infected me with outbursts. It's contagious? It is contagious, yes. Ow! Damn it, Cthulhu. You really just need to start giving him a name. Like Doug. I did name one of the minis on uh, our, one of the descriptions I wrote for one of the minis that I just added to Shopify was, had Doug in it, um, in the description. It was really cute. I don't remember exactly how I put it now, but it was, it was funny at the time. It was really funny and I tickled myself because it was cool. It was cool. Or is in the background making noises again, so I'm copying them. I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> I know, but it's funny. Yes, join the Discord of Doom. <laughs> As I mix paint and randomly slap it on. That's not where the big spoon goes. Shh, Cora, I'm streaming. And it's probably you who put the big spoon in the wrong spot, so. Mom doesn't know how to put silverware right, correct? Just so everyone knows. Um, but it's my house, so it's where it goes where I say it goes. I would say that, you know, I do most of the cooking, so I put things where I want them, but I don't really even do most of the cooking anymore. Ow, Cthulhu, let go! Sorry, I keep doing that where I can, like, bring them up close to my face so I can see what I'm doing. Yes. Glasses. Cold soup. Cora is threatening the dog with cold soup if he doesn't quit whining. I'm just gonna narrate my house. How's that, guys? A million viewers just went, turn off the channel. <laughs> The funny thing is, is whether that we're streaming or not, this is pretty much what our house is like. We're all randomly yelling, singing, making noise. No, that is not mostly me. I can hear you singing from downstairs. Throwing things at each other. That's mostly me. But to be fair, I'm usually throwing them for the dog. I just don't happen to notice the person that's walking down the hallway as I'm throwing it. So I'm not really doing it to be mean. I'm doing it to support the dog's, you know, mental and physical health. <laughs> Hi, Maxie. You have... Joined in just in time for me to be going in crazy. Ah! Sorry, it sounds aren't working right now, so I did it for it. Why are you doing it in me? I didn't mean when it was. Sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 I'm pretty sure a few eardrums did. Oh, I could have gotten louder, but it wasn't the second one, so I didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <coughs> that was fun. Screw you, Cora. <laughs> oh, push the green button. What green button? Oh. Oh my god, I'm dying. Oh, I hate you so much, Cora. Oh, I hate you so much. I, 
I don't even know where to go with that. Um, yeah, no, that just like, wow. Um, excuse me, now I have the hiccups. Awesome. Don't you dare do it again. I will kill it. I will kill you. Oh, did you catch that one, Jake? <laughs> Good job. Yeah? Probably. Because I just saw a link come across. I'm guessing that's what that is. Oh, man. Oh, good lord, Cora. I literally threw him. <laughs> okay, Kai, Ty, uh, never again do we stream if the sounds aren't working. We do not need Cora helping out. Next time we will just restart the stream. I don't know why you're giggling. Oh my God, <laughs> you guys are jerks. You know I love you. Oh, <laughs> what the hell, Tyler? The cat. Oh, you just now saw I just saw, I was reading Max's message. They paused their stream to come over and spook me. <laughs> oh, I didn't sorry, see the buddy. damn cat. No. Thank you, Max, for the bits. Oh my God, that got me really good, though. Oh. Whew. Okay. Well, he has colored absolutely nothing like I was planning, but I'm kind of digging it. Oh, good Lord. Cora, I am like, no brats for you. You get cold soup. Cold soup for you. And because I completely changed all the tones that I was putting everywhere, I have given myself way more work to do. But that's okay. We can get it done. Or dorks. Oh, Cora, I think we broke a finger. He's missing a a shardy thing. That's what happens when he gets thrown across the room, though, man. I can't help it. Did you throw him across the room? No, I, I dropped him across here. So, oh, I found it. I found it. It's right here. That's what's missing. Oh, I love the cat. You guys are so weird. Why are we doing the cats? I found it. I'm the one that has to fix it. Bye, Max. We're almost done here ourselves. Because at this point, it's waiting for a lot of things to dry because I have put a lot of paint on him. So, like to the touch, he's kind of solid, but not, you know? So next time we'll have to work on the wings. And details on him but I like a lot of the color that's happening not sure what color I'm gonna take his wings yet though he's basically even from side to side Ooh, nope gotta get the inside of that hand Ooh. 
Sorry. The attack of Cthulhu. Um. But basically I'll need to get details done on him. Get his wings done. And I haven't touched this and this because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. That's going to match the wings, whatever I do there. Um. And then basically taking him... Hmm. I might end up doing his wings kind of a gray tone. I like how that gray is looking right there. And the dog is barking like crazy again. But once we start getting the details in... You can start to see how this piece here is kind of shaping up because I keep coming back to it because it's one of my favorite parts. Um, but that's kind of the detail work is, is that's the sort of thing that we'll end up doing next is getting everything kind of looking like this centerpiece. Not exactly like it, but to that level of detail is what I mean. I think I do like that gray look. So I'm gonna test it real quick. Now that we have multitude of pieces on Cthulhu to fix. So I don't wanna use that same brush, but I have another brush that's very similar in shape and texture. Paint it all black first just so that I've got the the shading already done down in the grooves you know I just added some of that lighter color. Take a completely clean brush. Just barely, barely touching it. I put a little bit of black on my not so clean brush anymore, and I hit my other color. Damn it. flip the brush around and use the other side. Yeah, I like that. I think that's what we're going to do is gray and black for the wings. 
because he's going to have a lot of dark areas on him anyway. So that's the kind of look that he'll end up with. And I think what I'll do is this will be a dark, dark green. But I think that matches really good. So that is pretty much it for today. Um, I'm at the point where Cthulhu has to dry and I am covered in paint and there's multitude of pieces I need to super glue now. And I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch my super glue dry. But I also do really, really like that blend. So I think I'm going to stay with that. Oh my gosh. Stay still, Wing. Thank you. So, anyway. Bye, guys. We'll see you next week. Uh, next week we'll be doing the Celestial Angel from Lord of the Print. Um, he's going to be awesome and amazing. And then Sunday we'll be working more on Cthulhu and potentially during the week as well we might do another stream on Cthulhu because he has got to get done. And believe it or not, it, I know it's just like we just slapped a whole bunch of paint on him. But believe it or not, just slapping the paint on like we did, we'll be able to come back with a dry brush and a detail brush and really just slam home some really amazing details. Even taking like some brown on a toothbrush and spraying some brown spots on him, like freckles. So, but anyway, we will see you guys on Tuesday when we're streaming the first Lord of the Print print that we have gotten.